If you think you might be in perimenopause, but you have no idea what blood work you should have done, this video is for you. You're gonna wanna go ahead and bookmark this one because I'm going to reveal everything. Let me just start off by saying that blood work during perimenopause can be very confusing because there actually aren't any standard clinical ranges for perimenopause. And this is exactly why your doctor has probably told you that they either can't run labs for perimenopause or when they do, they tell you that everything looks normal even though you absolutely do not feel normal. But here's the deal. Not only can we run labs for perimenopause, I'm going to walk you through line by line exactly which labs we run for our perimenopause patients and why? Yeah. Starting with the basics, we run a CBC and a CMP just as a general health assessment. Next, we want to look at overall metabolic function because as you know, perimenopause does not just impact your sex hormones, it impacts every single system in our bodies. And a lot of times your metabolic labs can show us a lot of red flags for perimenopause. These labs include a lipid panel, hemoglobin A1C, cortisol, and we run a full thyroid panel, including thyroid antibodies. Metabolic, adrenal, and thyroid dysfunction are so interwoven with perimenopause and the symptoms just compound and then they feed off of each other. So it's extremely important that we understand the root and the extent of your symptoms so we can treat them accordingly. Next, we want to assess pituitary and ovarian function. We run FSH, prolactin, estradiol, progesterone, free testosterone, total testosterone, and sex hormone binding globulin. Prolactin is a pituitary hormone and we just check this kind of as a precaution to rule out any pituitary dysfunction or even pituitary tumors that can mimic perimenopause symptoms. Next, we'll look at follicular stimulating hormone or FSH. This tells us how well your ovaries are responding to signals from your brain. When the ovaries aren't responding like they're supposed to, we start to see subtle increases in FSH levels. When we look at your sex hormones, we always want to check your bioavailable hormones. This is very important. This includes estradiol, progesterone, and free testosterone. And then sex hormone binding globulin is a protein that tells us whether or not your body actually has access to those hormones. And then lastly, we want to look at vitamin and mineral deficiencies, including vitamin D, B12, and ferritin. Vitamin and iron deficiencies are not only common during perimenopause, but they could be exacerbating your symptoms. So again, it is important that we identify the root of your symptoms so we can provide you with comprehensive symptom management. Do not let your doctor tell you that they cannot run labs for perimenopause because we can. And if your doctor won't run them for you, we would be more than happy to. Feel free to drop any questions that you guys have about blood work in the comments. And if you found this video to be helpful, go ahead and hit that follow button for more perimenopause and menopause science fact hacks.